Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is Jay Yudlovsky, and on my channel I talk about photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even a little bit of video and video editing. Today I wanted to get into some Photoshop. More specifically, I want to talk about fixing old photos. Um, you might have some old photos around that you might need to fix up, or maybe the color got a little faded. Uh, in this case, this was uh, one from my parents. Um, it's an old wedding picture of theirs, and the color on it's really faded. Um, I'll get some closer shots of it so you can see what it looks like now. But what I was thinking is just showing you guys how I would um, get this picture into the computer and then how I would use Photoshop to help bring back some of the colors, take care of some of the spots that uh, have gotten damaged over the years, and just share how to restore an old photo. So let me show you how I'm gonna get this into the computer and then we'll get going in Photoshop to fix it up. So the first thing we need to do is get this picture into the computer so that we can bring it into Photoshop and start to work with it. So there's a couple ways you could do that. One way is to scan it. Um, for me, I don't have a scanner that's big enough to fit this. Uh, I'm not sure what size this photo is, but it's pretty big. Definitely bigger than eight and a half by 11, which is the size of my scanner. So the next thing uh, that I would think to do is to use my DSLR to take a picture of it that I can then bring it into the computer. So what I wanna do in order to get a good picture of it is try and find somewhere, whether it's inside, whether it's outside, where you're kinda of in an open shade type situation where you don't have the sun directly onto the picture because you don't want any hot spots. You just want it lit nice and evenly. Um, diffuse light is what we're really looking for. So I mean, if you had a diffuser, you could hold it in front of a window and, and do it that way. Uh, I'm gonna take a look around my house here, see where I might be able to get a good picture of it with some good diffuse light. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that and or how I do that and we're gonna get a picture of it so we can bring it over to the computer. So let's get going on that. All right, so I think I found a good location that we can use here in my house for photographing this picture so that we can then bring it over to Photoshop and start to work with it. So I have nice big windows here and uh, I have some blinds on the windows and I'm gonna rotate the blinds up so that the sun isn't shining directly on the ground. So I'm gonna take this picture and put it on the ground and uh, start photographing it. Take some pictures of this so then we can bring it into Photoshop. So I'm actually gonna use the 5D Mark IV that I have, which I'm filming with now. So I'm gonna go grab that camera. We're gonna grab some pictures of this and then we're gonna bring it on over into the computer, see how we can fix it up in Photoshop. So as you saw, I was able to get some shots of the image I want to fix up in Photoshop. And I actually decided to bring over my tripod so I could use a low ISO. I wanted to use a low ISO so that I could get the best quality image that I could get. I mean, if I handheld it, I'd probably have to be around 800 ISO or so. Um, but instead, I wanted to use a lower ISO. So I used 200 ISO. And for the uh, aperture, I think I used uh, around 5.6 or so, but I'll double check that on the computer and let you know what that was. So let's get over to the computer and check it out. Before we go get over to the computer and sit down and check that out, I was thinking it's time for some brew. Good stuff, I think I'm ready now. All right, let's go. So here we are in Lightroom and I'm gonna show you how to take this image over into Photoshop, make the edits we need and bring it back into Lightroom. Lightroom is where I keep all my photos so I'm always gonna start there. So here I've selected the image that I want to retouch and fix. So you can see here in this uh, photograph on the screen here, I shot it at 1 15th of a second. Again, it was on my tripod because I wanted to use the, a low ISO. In this case, I used ISO 200, an aperture of f. Five, and I had zoomed in to 70 millimeters. So here you can see the legs of my tripod. That doesn't matter because I'm really gonna just crop into this image itself and that's what we're gonna work with in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a few minor adjustments here in Lightroom. 
I'm going to go over to the develop module by pressing D. Going to get rid of our little information up here by pressing the letter I. So the only thing I really want to do is come down to lens corrections. I'm going to enable the lens corrections and then transform. I'm just going to hit auto here and see what that does. Okay, straighten it out a little bit. Not too big a deal. The next thing I want to do is crop this image so I have just the picture that I want to bring over to Photoshop. I don't need the frame and all the other stuff. So I'm going to Go ahead and crop this down. Maybe I'll leave it a little big so I can crop it just a touch more in Photoshop. And I'm gonna unlock my aspect ratio here so I can pull in the bottom here. All right, looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna say okay. So here we've got our picture and I want to bring it over into Photoshop. So very easily what I'm gonna do is just press Command E right here in Lightroom. And that's gonna automatically bring this photo from Lightroom over into Photoshop. So just like that, we're over in Photoshop with our image. So the first thing that I want to do is run an action that's going to set up a bunch of different layers for me. I'll explain it as we go through it, what each layer is and what I'm doing, because you can just as easily make the layers yourself. So I'm going to come over here and run this action that I have. Now that the action's complete, I'm going to get started. And the first thing I want to work with is taking care of any blemishes or any uh, damaged areas of the picture. So I'm going to click on this blemishes layer here. So I'm going to start just going through this image and removing any problem areas or anything that doesn't look good or where the picture was ruined or damaged. I'm not going to worry about the color so much, but mostly here you can see like there's scratches. Uh, so I'm going to go in and take care of that first. So the tools I'm going to be using are the healing brush, the spot healing brush, and uh, I might even use regular paint brushes a little bit. But for now, I'm going to start with the spot healing brush tool right here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for fixing up any problem areas or blemishes within the image. Uh, it was mainly a couple scratches and a few maybe spots of dust or whatever. So I think we're good there. We'll move on to the next step. So I'm going to start here by selecting a levels adjustment layer. I just want to hit auto levels and see what happens there. All right, brightens it up a little bit. Not too bad. And a lot of Photoshop work is just trial and error. You try different things, you see what works. Since I don't have really have a lot of detail in the face in this picture, I'm actually going to remove some of these layers that the action put in there because I'm not going to need them. Next, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. All right, so in my curves layer, I can see that in this area, I want to add in a little more uh, green. I want it to look a little bit greener. So I'm going to come to the blue channel here and I'm going to push a little bit more yellow in. Come to the green channel. Add a little bit more green in there. We're, what we're going to do is going to mask out the people here so that this grass looks a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to come on this curves layer here and I'm going to make a selection of the people so I can pull them out of the image. Let's try the select subject feature, see if that works. Hey, not bad. Worked out pretty good. So I'm going to fill my selection with black so that they're unaffected by the curves layer here. I think now I'm going to go ahead and just crop in on the image here. I'm liking how that grass looks a little bit greener there. It's kind of nice. Now I need to work on them a little bit there. So I'm going to create another curves layer and I'm actually going to copy this mask up and I'm going to invert it, fill it with white and fill the outside with black. All right, so to remove the yellow here, I might just try and clone it out from some lawn over here. So let's give that a shot. So now that I've got most of that yellow out, I want to take the clone stamp tool and just kind of color over it a little bit. I'm going to drop down my opacity, maybe 25%. So the reason I've made these into a smart object is so that I can come over to the filter menu and try some of the camera raw filter options. I just want to see how it works here because sometimes it's quicker just to come in here and use camera raw instead of trying to use layers and different kinds of things in Photoshop itself. Or in the HSL panel here, I'm going to uh, drop down. I can see, still see a little bit of purple on the, the skins, that skin tone there. 
So I think I want to drop back that purple a little bit. And push those purples more towards reds. That might be a little bit better. One thing I might want to try throwing on here is a color lookup table and just see how some of those look. So I'm going to add the adjustment layer for color lookup table here and then just select different 3D LUT files here and just see what I like. Okay, next I'm going to copy all the layers. Throw one on top here. I want to make the blend mode screen to brighten it up. I'm going to add a layer mask here. And I want to paint in a little bit over the face here. Just to brighten it up a little. Brighten them up just a little bit. Brighten the hands just a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is come back into the smart object and I want to add a little bit more depth using contour and highlight. It's basically dodging and burning is what we're doing here. If I turn off the mask, you can see dodging is darker. Burning's making it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to come in with a flow of around, I'm going to use 5%. And I'm going to start with just darkening some areas. And then I'm going to come back and lighten some areas just to kind of give the scene a little more depth to it. Okay, and then I'm going to save that. Once it saves, I can close it and go back into my original drawing here, which will then include the same smart object. All right, so here you can see it's looking a lot better. I'm still not happy with the way this looks over here and this little spot up here, I think I might have darkened that too much. So I'm gonna go back and fix that up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so here we go. I went in, corrected the image. It was actually uh, something a lot easier than I thought. I just sampled the color from the grass and I painted over the yellow area without actually having to copy or use the healing brush on anything and it worked out pretty well. So here's our after image and here's the before. So that's before and here's after. I think it worked out pretty good. So I hope this helps show you how I would retouch this old photograph and how I would fix it up a little bit. I think I'm gonna try printing it out and see how it looks. So it's not too hard and just takes a little bit of trial and error to get uh, get it looking pretty good. So thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something and you like this video. Again, on my channel, I talk about photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even a little bit of video and video editing. So if you're into any of that and you like the rest of my videos, subscribe to my channel.